Hey, you're gonna absolutely love this interview with Ricky Stanzi. If you've never heard of Dodo before, it is the perfect crash course to take you from having no idea what that is to really expanding your mind. If you are already into Goda, I promise you that there will be some other little nuggets that Ricky and I unpack. This is one of my favorite interviews in a very long time. I think that you're gonna enjoy it. Here's a conversation with Ricky. All righty, Ricky, welcome to the podcast. I'm excited to be talking with you. Thanks for having me, man. So I am a um, son of a Penn State football fan. And okay. so I've been paying attention to the Big Ten for uh, quite a while. So when I first came across Goda, which is this mm -hmm. um, kind of training philosophy, I, I first came to it through that lens. And then I realized that I can remember candidly rooting against you guys when you were playing Penn State and the Big Ten back in the day. Um, so let's kick things off and try to just play a little bit of connect the dots between mm -hmm. being a quarterback at the University of Iowa and now being kind of the, the forefather or leading the thought around a very specific style of training. Yeah. So, you know, 2010, 2011, right around that time is when I'm going into the NFL draft and, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking to make some changes to my movement patterns, right? Make some changes to my throws. I was kind of starting to to tail at the end of 2010. And I, and I knew I needed to make some changes physically to compete at that next level at the NFL level. So I started to kind of look at movement with a little more scrutiny, you know, a little finer tooth comb, try to understand things a little bit more, went to some, some throwing gurus. I actually worked with um, Tom Martinez, who was Tom Brady's throwing coach since he was a young kid. And, and, you know, I, I bounced around different methods really from 2011 all the way until 2018 when I was done. And I had just finished uh, you know, up in Canada, and I got cut from from their team in, in Calgary at the end of camp. For that time period, there was really me like objectively looking at movement and trying to figure out it from my own standpoint, just to try to stay on a team because I was struggling. I wasn't playing fast enough. I was having these non-contact uh, sort of chronic pain injuries. And for somebody that's, I was QB3, I mean, you're third on the depth chart. So I'm just sitting there not taking a bunch of reps and my body was still falling apart. So I had a lot of questions about why I wasn't moving the way I wanted to, why when I try to throw that 10 yard out, I know where I want to go with the ball, but it doesn't seem to, to take place like it used to. What's going on? So I, I looked at the Pilates, the yoga, as I had already been doing Olympic lifting in, in that style for my whole life. Um, and I started looking into Eastern medicine, Eastern arts, uh, look a little bit closer at Shaolin, uh, look a little bit closer at martial arts in general. And just trying to get a well-rounded view of, of, of how the body was supposed to move. Like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, there's got to be a right here. There's got to be a right and there's got to be a wrong. And I just kept using that sort of objective lens to, to, to stay on a field, to just kind of navigate and comb through these, these um, modalities and nothing worked. You know, I can honestly say I tried all these different methods, all these different concepts and nothing worked. And it wasn't until I was cut home, hanging out knew I wanted to train people because I had just grown to love human movement and just in, in, in everything about it and trying to learn about it. But I still wasn't, I didn't have a good map. I didn't have a blueprint to work off of. You know, I'm somebody who's still having back spasms that I've had since eighth grade when I started to do deadlifts, working with the WOTA trainers. And I'm still having those at age 33. And so I can't fix myself, but I'm supposed to go into a high school and work on people, or I'm supposed to go and work with, you know, an aunt or an uncle or somebody that's 50. So there was a lot of questions I had, and it finally started to make sense when I got to talk with Coach Gilly, Jose Bosch, um, and, and Gary Scheffler. Uh, and those, both those guys <clears throat> were on Instagram, and that's where I was looking at, or should I say looking for, a couple key concepts that I had come across in books. You know, the Spinal Engine Theory, uh, Muscles and Meridians was a book that talked about resting on the ground. So a lot of things pointing back to how things naturally happen out in nature, closest to the source. And then Gilly was speaking directly to that. He's like, we got the slow motion video of the indigenous and they're moving a certain way. And we got the slow motion video of the crawling baby. We got the slow motion video of the Michael Jordan, Ed Reed, Randy Moss, Simone Biles, Jackie Robinson. We got the slow motion video of the Ida Keelings and the Hurricane Hawkins. We've also got the video of the injury, of the non-contacts, of the people that have chronic pain. And now we're looking at the movement with these new supercomputers, this is what Gilly did, was he looked at these supercomputers, I'm kind of segueing into what Goda is here, 
and, and, and Gilly looked at the, the movement of those closest to nature and said, what are they doing that we're not? And what he noticed was those four super tribes that I just mentioned, the crawling baby, the indigenous, the decade plus super freak athlete and the 70 plus age groupers, they've got a commonality to them, right? They got an anti-fragile state that they are in because they move a certain way. Conversely, those that are injured, the, the WOTAs, the worst of all time actions, they have a pattern that is common to all of them. And it is a fragile pattern. It is a pattern that continually breaks down over and over again. And it looks the same. So the GOTAs look the same. The WOTAs look the same. And Gilly came to this through the, sort of the same lens that I came to movement through a lot of the people that we work with from a coaching standpoint, come to it where they're searching because they are hurt. Their body is not working for them and they need answers. Gilly had blown out three levels in his lumbar. So he had blown the discs at three spots. And his next step was they were going to try to put a cage in this man. He had gone, he had like eight or nine doctors, the best in the world. Everybody looking at it, they can't fix it. He finally gets his big break when he meets Pete Agoscu and he starts to learn about column building and he starts to get out of pain and he gets decompressed. Long story short, though, he wants to get back to the things he loves. He wants to get back to triathlons. He wants to get back to, um, you know, golfing every single day. And so there was a movement component that he was missing. And until he was able to take that iPad, that supercomputer, and, and take a look at those new Atlantis videos on YouTube, take a look at all the ACL shreds, take a look at Michael Jordan walking, watch Ed Reed coming out of the title or out of the tunnel. All those pieces together gave really Gilly that, that breakthrough moment where he's like, oh my gosh, there is a right and a wrong. There's a certain way that the body moves and all these concepts that we've come, you know, to know through the training world of, of straight lines, linear is really the big picture, linear concepts and lifting concepts. They actually speak to and code the WOTA behavior. So, you know, long story short, I started in 2010 looking for the truth. Another guy was doing the same thing well before me. And then just kind of through the luck of just trying to objectively find the, the truth here and knowing that the, the only objective reality is nature. I started to follow that path and, and that led me to Gilly, which, which led me to go to and, I was ready for it. Like I tell these guys, my cup was empty. I was ready to see the truth. I've been a quarterback my whole life. I love watching slow motion video. So this was a perfect blend for me. And then I just, you know, took off running right after that. So before we get any further, I want to make sure that we have really tight definitions for people uh, that have never come across Goda mm -hmm. before. So you referenced Woda, which is kind of the, the foil to Goda. Give us the, the kind of yes. yin and yang of that. So Goda, greatest of all time actions, Woda worst of all time action. So if I'm going to talk about these actions, what I'm really speaking on, and we post this on IG quite a bit, just to keep it out there in circulation is the global laws of GOTA. So what we're saying is there are global laws that are cross culture all over the world, uh, because we all have the same stuff. You got a foot, I got a foot, we got ankles, we got hips. These are fractals of nature. They work, they just keep populating uh, out into, uh, into the globe, land, air, and sea, hips and spines are everywhere. So there's a certain way that this body is built to move forward through space. What we're saying is that the default human OS, the way it's designed is to move forward through space. So the global laws are such that we've got to have straight feet at the base of the column, the column being the sides of the body. So you have two columns at the base is your foundation. So this is what we call the pivot point. So in nature, in the, in the universe, there's these pivot point energy systems, like a toroidal, a torus, where there's a point and then energy is going to move around that corner. There's a point and then energy moves around that corner like a hurricane, like a tornado, like a swell in the ocean. That same concept is playing out on your side of the body. So on one side of the body. So picture just my right side here as you're looking at it, as I or as left side as you're looking at it, as I land, that foot is the pivot point. So it's going to anchor and it's going to set up that strong arch that allows the ankle, which is the shin, the thigh, which is the, the hip the spine and the bicep and the forearm to all open and then close around the top outside corner of the foot. So the first two global laws are, I gotta have column building with straight feet, meaning at the base of that column, the foot is straight and the inner ankle bone is high. So if this is my foot and here's my second toe and this is the inner part of the ankle, we want the inner ankle to be high. We do not want the inside ankle bone to be low. Cause like I said, there is a pivot point to this system. So. We can work off the outside corner of the foot, the four toe crease. If you think about your second toe to your pinky, or we could work off the inside corner of the foot as the pivot point. Now the godas, 
the global laws of Gota as seen through the four tribes is that they work off the outside corner of the foot. So their second toe is straight, their inside ankle bone is high. They got the pressure here. That way this ankle that is your shin can open in a spiral and then close in a spiral. And then you can reset and do it all over again. And you never create this harmony in the system. The WOTA on the other hand has collapsed this arch, whether it be from a bad shoe that closed the toe box from too much sitting that pushed the hips in the front chain or from too many lifting or linear concepts that have now changed the pivot point to the inside of the foot. Because much like we have a drive gear on the outside corner of the foot, we also have a reverse gear on the inside corner of the foot. And that's for us to lift. So we have the ability to go into reverse much like a car does. But at the same idea here is that you're not going to drive that car 80 miles an hour in reverse on the highway, right? You're going to dominate most of your driving with the forward gear, with the drive gear. So the body is much like that. We want to dominate off the outside corner, not the inside corner. So what the WOTA is doing, different from the GOTA, is they've now collapsed that arch. They've now taken the foot and they've opened it and they've splayed it like this. And they're going to work off the big toe crease. So now that ankle that was sitting up here like this and was spiraling out to in, it's now dropped down in here in its inside ankle bone low, and it's going to go in to out. So column building, straight foot, inside ankle bone high. And then the next piece here is we got to be back chain dominant. So I go up to the hip level. We want the hip to play behind the ribs as we move forward through space, right? So I throw something out the back to move me forward. Hip drives back to drive the chest forward. So the haunches are loading and they're they're securing the spine as I move forward through space. The the opposite of that for the WODA would be front chain dominance. So now they push their hips forward, right? Their chest goes up and back as they try to move forward through space. That hip pushing forward, the chest going up and back, that's your deadlift. That's your lifting engine. That's your reverse gear. That's your tug of war. That's your, you're rowing the boat. You're going backwards. So you have this, these three basic global laws to start it. Column building with straight feet, inside ankle bone high. I got to be back chain dominant. And then now I need to create this energy wave. So I've kind of already touched on this. I'm inside ankle bone high. Here's my ankle. So now when I create the energy wave, what I'm saying is that when I put the foot down, when I put the pivot point in the ground, I'm going to load up that column. So I'm going to load up the right side of my body as you're looking at it. And when I do that, the shin has to open. So as, as below, so above. So now as the shin's opening, the thigh's opening, the spine's opening, the bicep is opening. And now we have head control, meaning that that tracking system, that is my visual engine right here, this, this ver these vertebrae right here is going to sit over the column that I've loaded. And then it's going to go ahead and I'm going to release that energy. And then I'm going to start the same process over on the other side. So the global laws are speaking to this cycle of forward movement. That is our walk, run, throw, swing, strike. I land, I leave. I release and I reset. I land, I leave, I release and I reset. The godas have a straight foot. The inside ankle bone is high. They're in the back chain, the hips behind the rib. The ankle opens in a spiral. The ankle closes in a spiral and the arch never drops throughout the whole process. The woda, on the other hand, lands inside ankle bone low. They start the shin in on a spiral and then they spiral it out. The heel releases in, the hip thrusts forward, the chest goes up and back. And so they're using that pattern to move them forward through space. Now that WOTA pattern that I just showed you or uh, spoke about, that is the ACL shred. That is the Achilles shred. That is the back spasm. That is the, uh, you know, patellar tendonitis. That is the shin splints. Uh, that is the, you know, the burning pain in your hip. So the symptoms that we've given names to are actually just sort of collateral damage from a faulty pattern off of the base blueprint that is forward movement that we've observed in those four super tribes. The crawlers, right? The newborn baby, we've got video of babies fresh out the womb doing these same global laws. The indigenous tribes down in the Western basin of the Amazon, the, 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 the butt naked barefoot tribes of the Yanomamis and the Karubos all move the same way from birth all the way through to the adulthood. These decade plus super freaks that are able to put a lot of this stuff to, 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 to bed and not start to show the WOTA in their career, and then the 70 plus age groupers, they're all displaying something that's GOTA. The people that are injured are displaying something that's WOTA. So the GOTA is a celebration of the global laws. The WOTA is violating those global laws, and that's going to lead to injury.
There's so much I love about what you 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 put down just now. Um, I want to make sure that we we try to touch on all of it. Um, and I, I want to end with a kind of question on the feet here. But in terms of that mm-hmm. pathway, I just want to point out that you know we talk very often all sorts of different businesses where there's two ways to approach it. There's you know take uh, not necessarily like what's you know the 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 good word from some sort of higher power, but just you know someone who is a purported expert kind of telling you like it is, and you just going yeah. through the motions without actually really critically evaluating it. Versus building up from first principles, like you're saying, you're seeing patterns and connective tissue through all of these basically like aspirational arenas because mm-hmm. you know all of these characters have low rates of injury, high rates of flexibility, all sorts of good stuff like that, um, which I, I think is is a kind of universal principle. But to come back to the feet, um, mm-hmm. a, another, and I don't know if this is you or someone else in the kind of Goda posting. Um, explain something, and and once you see like a like a really simple meme, it's so like clarifying. It's like there's all this kind of chaos, and all of a sudden it kind of clicks into place. You're like, yeah. oh, I just why have I never even been told that? Before? Why didn't I see that? Right? Yeah. But but someone th- there was a post that basically said uh, you were talking about like the two sides of your foot, the inside and the outside, and said the front outside of your foot is for propulsion, the front inside of your foot is for balance. And your heel is for resting, and that's an you know an oversimplification. But you just never, uh, unless you had the right coach, mm-hmm. you either maintain that because no one coached it out of you as a, as an infant, or you have to relearn how to use your foot, like this thing that's attached to you twenty four seven that you probably never think about, but is an engineering marvel. Yeah, and and the big piece there is that the the concept here is this. So let me start with this: the nervous system is a servant to the environment. Right. So this is why Chinese foot binding works. Right. It's something that we can do. Should we do it? Probably not. Is it designed to do that? No. But can it? Sure. So the nervous system is going to, it's going to obey whatever inputs you're giving it. So when people start to wake up to the GOTA, to the GOTA concepts, they're like, oh, shoot, you know, they're probably 25, 30 years old, maybe older. And they're looking down at their feet and they're like, dude, how long have I been walking like this? Decades. Right. So now I do have to teach my nervous system, the right pattern, because I've let it go into the wrong pattern for so long, whether it be from, like I said, somebody could wear a bad shoe when they're seven years old and spend a summer in it. And it can start to change the way that they're using their foot just because of the toe box being too tight. Somebody could spend an off season doing deadlifts and change the outside corner of their foot to the inside corner of the foot because the nervous system has to obey its environment. That's good news and bad news, right? It's good news. Because now I can go ahead the other way and I can fix it. It's bad news that if you're not aware, you can easily fall into the WOTA trap and you can easily start to get decoded um, because you're not aware of these simple concepts or you're getting faulty information, like people telling you to land into your heel, people telling you to push off the big toe. These concepts are out there. They teach it. They call it heel toe off. Hit the heel strike and then toe off the big toe. Well, what that does is it changes the pivot point. So let's say you spend a weekend or a summer learning from a sprint coach that wants you to heel toe, you're going to put the nervous system into that environment and it's going to start to change. At Goto, we just bring you into our environment. That map is off the four tribes and we speak to that. And then people are like, man, the pain's gone. Well, it's like, yeah, you're paying homage to the design. You know, you're not letting your arch collapse anymore. Arches aren't built to collapse. It's common sense, right? So you have that same concept at the base of your foot. Of course, I've got to lift the inside ankle bone high. Everything slopes to the outside edge. If you work off the inside edge, it's like a cliff. The ankle gets stuck. It's a no bueno situation. So let's talk to what I would guess is the majority of listeners, which are not necessarily pursuing some sort of athletic right. goal primarily. These, you yes. know, they're, they're running a business. They want to not break down. They want to have the energy for the day. They don't want to be in pain, like you're saying, but they're not necessarily mm-hmm. pursuing, you know, maybe they want to, you know, get they're handicapped down from a golf standpoint, but it's not right. a kind of all consuming goal. They want to, you know, 80, 20, it. what are some of the things I can be doing, like wearing the right shoes that will put mm-hmm. me in a position to feel less pain, to start to, you know, I- improve my body and not have um, a, a WOTA phys- physique. Yeah. So, and, and we, we take the same concept for our athletes. So we tell our athletes that the, you know, I would say tier one is what you just said. Somebody that's just trying to go through life work their nine to five, enjoy their family, enjoy their friends, but just never get a knee replacement, never get a new hip, never have that foot plantar fasciitis, fasciitis, never have a back that keeps spasming. 
Um, and then there's tier two and tier three, which is your tier two is probably your weekend warrior. They like the intramurals. They want to go after it still. Tier three is you're getting, you're getting paid to play. Even if you're at that top paid to play, I still tell those people up there, listen, 10% is your training. 90% is your lifestyle. Now for this first group that you just mentioned, a hundred percent of what they do is inside of that lifestyle, right? What shoes are you wearing? If you pick up a shoe and you go to put it on, is your toe box super tight and clenched? Because if it is, that's going to change the way that your foot is working. So right off the bat, I would say, give yourself a, a chance, right? Give yourself a shoe that at least lets your foot widen out a little bit. There's some wiggle room with arch or no arch. You shouldn't, whether the arch support is there or not, you shouldn't be using it because your foot should be doing that actively. Your foot should be doing the work, not sitting there on a, on a sofa that is an arch support in your shoe. Um, and then, you know, heel elevation can start to play a problem with the tight toe box, but just making a, a good shoe choice is a good start. Outside of that, even bigger picture is let's change the way that you move your body, right? So just putting on a good shoe isn't enough. You can't just put on a minimalist shoe and start to move Goda. It's not going to make you stronger. In fact, it'll actually just make your woe to show itself even quicker. So what you want to do is you want to start to walk and let's start to talk about these global laws and how can I apply them in my daily life? Well, first off, get your feet underneath you. So we tell people, get, get your feet a fist width distance apart. That means if you're at work, you're standing around the water cooler, you're standing in line at Target, whatever you're doing, you're doing dishes, keep your feet a fist width distance apart. Keep your second toe straight. Imagine that your second toe is a laser pointer and that light is shining to infinity. That light should be shining straight ahead. If that light's deviated like this, you're going to start to invite the collapse. You're going to start to invite compression in the system. So just by getting your feet underneath you, underneath your hips, because your hips are only sitting like three inches off the midline. They're not far out here like people think. They're very tight to the spine. Get your feet closer. Get your feet straight, second toe. And then that inner ankle bone, Okay, so it's the inner ankle bone that you can touch and see. You want to lift that thing up high so that now the pressure is working off the outside corner of the foot. Conversely, the inside ankle bone high would be this inside ankle bone low that we talk about. So just by getting your feet closer and straightening them out, you're already kind of on your way to inside ankle bone high, but there's still some work that needs to be done to make sure that this doesn't happen as you're standing, as you're walking, as you're jogging, as you're hanging out. And so this inside ankle bone high at the base of the column is the first thing that we want people to work on. Now it's more complicated than that, but at least getting the process started can really just, it, it, we tell people this all the time and people come back that didn't get a recode or didn't buy it. And there's like, yeah, I just started walking with straight feet closer. And I feel a lot better because if you just think about it and extrapolate it, take your feet outside really far and then turn your toes out. Guess where all the pressure funnels down and in. So now if you build this nice half dome with the foot where you kind of play the floor as lava with the ankles, don't let the ankles go down and in, keep them up and high away from the inside, right then and there, you're already aiding in this concept of being decompressed. So you can see compression as the root of all evil for movement problems. So whether you're a professional athlete or you're just Jane Doe and you're working through the nine to five, if you're sitting in a desk for nine and a half hours, you're in a compressed state. So piggybacking off of standing better, straight foot. Another good visual for them is if you're working, let's say you're working at a desk, you're doing the dishes, something in front of you, and you're leaning your hips against the counter or the desk. People do this all the time. Pull your hips off the counter. That's back chain dominance. That's the starting of back chain dominance. So you could even do this little drill at your house, get in front of a sink, uh, get in front of uh, something with a, a counter, get your feet underneath you, Get your second toe straight and then notice your hip against the counter. Pull that hip away from the counter. Feel your hip go back. Feel your spine lengthen out. That's where you're kind of in this security system. And now you want to stay inside this security system as much as you can throughout the day. So when you're waiting or when you're, you're standing and getting ready to go, you're, you're, you're in it. When you start to walk, keep the straight feet. Keep the inside ankle bones high. Keep the narrow columns as you go about walking. Now, if you're somebody that's working a nine to five and you can't control your desk sitting, it is what it is. But the final piece to that is I would try to urge people to get back to the ground to rest. Sitting isn't the problem. It's where we're sitting. We need to be sitting on the ground in these shapes that are across culture all over the world. Crisscross applesauce, Seiza, where you're sitting on your shins, cowboy posture, where you got one leg in a squat, one leg in a, in a Seiza, or even just the, the, the classic um, 
double resting or the, the double bow resting squat that you see in the, in the, in the babies and the indigenous. So we're built to rest on the ground. We're built to walk straight foot inside ankle bone high. So pretty much everybody, whether you're on tier one, two, or three pro, or just hanging out, being a Joe, you need those basic principles to be installed in your day to day. Now there's a little asterisk next to the, to the floor sitting. I would not urge people just to immediately go to the floor and throw themselves into the most, you know, the, the most, the furthest expressed ranges of these shapes because your body isn't ready for them yet because it's been in a chair. So there is a sort of slow feeding process to these things. And, and, and if you're following us on Instagram, or if you start following us on Instagram, you'll see these shapes. We have tools at our disposal, at our disposal through go to shop that kind of bridges the gap when you're starting to, sh- to sit in these, in these ancient postures on the ground to help sort of ease yourself. But the big picture concept for people with the lifestyle, start to stand with the columns narrow, second toe straight inside ankle bone high, get your hips off the counter, keep that same feeling when you walk and then try to get back to the ground and, and reach out to somebody that's in the go to camp about these floor resting postures so that you don't overcook or push your nervous system, sort of waterboard your nervous system, as we would say, uh, too much too soon. You have to pay homage to the fact that you've been a WOTA for a while. We've got to slowly spoon feed the nervous system back to go to, but it really does start with the day to day, the walking and the rest. And it's another lesson. Um, I, 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 once again, I think this is just kind of a lifetime universal lesson, not just in the boundaries of kind of movement and how your body functions. Most of the stuff has already been figured out. Most of the stuff is actually relatively simple. If you just kind of reorient what you're focusing on. So food can be a very similar way in the sense of like all this brand new, newfangled, super processed foods, probably not as good for you as a good apple, a good steak, yep. a good egg. Some of these just kind of timeless things that people have been eating through time in memoriam. And mm-hmm. it's just kind of applying that in another domain where for whatever reasons, modern life has kind of um, blurred our vision to the, the reality of. Yeah. I, you could say there's a goda and a woda for everything. It's just us saying, it's us saying right and wrong. Like, look, you got all these other systems in the body. You got a cardiovascular system. You know, you got the, the musculoskeletal system, which is what we work on. You got the lymphatic system. Yeah, I can go on and name them all. Well, we know that there's a right and a wrong for those systems, right? There's a, there's a, the yin and the yang there. There's a good and a bad. So there's a good and a bad for your movement system too. Like, you know, that pop tarts aren't good for you, right? We, we, we know this now we know what, what is a good choice from a nutrition standpoint and what is a poor choice from a nutrition standpoint. So we know there's a good input to what I'm eating, just like there's a bad input to what I'm eating. So the same concept goes on for your heart, your lungs, same concept goes on for your musculoskeletal system and your connective tissue and your joints. There's a good input, a go to input, and there's a bad input, a woe to input. So now I want to talk about this, this training business in particular. So you're giving a, a ton of good stuff away for free. And like you said, one of the things you guys do are these recodes, you sell online courses, you have a facility down mm-hmm. in New Orleans where people will actually go into to train if they're maybe at that higher tier kind of athlete pursuing some really big stuff. Can you kind of give a synopsis of what go to the businesses? Because another part that's that's um, different than a majority of the businesses out there is you guys, at least from my vantage point, really see this as a movement. It's it's a you're kind of buying into this new way of thinking about things. And so in a, in a movement, if you almost think about it more politically, and I'm not trying to go like left or right or anything like that here, but you yeah. think about a political movement, and part of the the nature of it is that other people can adopt it, feel ownership of it, move into it, which is like a great thing from a brand standpoint, but probably a challenging thing from like a business model standpoint. So tell me how you guys are thinking about that and what some of the applications are of actually turning this into a sustainable business. Yeah. So I think right at the the beginning of it, to keep it simple, because it does branch and it gets bigger and and there's a lot to it. Um, If you're an athlete or if you're a regular Joe, if you're anybody on that tier one, two or three, no matter what you want to be doing. Um, we offer recodes. So we have coaches uh, that are starting to, you know, we're getting more and more coaches 
uh, each year and they're on gotocoaches.com. But reaching out to somebody to get a recode is kind of the first the first piece of that, right? Of, of, of training someone, assessing them, taking them through a recode regimen, sort of that daily routine, the same way that you wash your hair and brush your teeth for, for hygiene maintenance. We consider that movement maintenance. Um, it's, it's a low threshold, not a lot of weight. All you need is a ground in a wall, maybe a staircase. Um, and we can give people nice daily recode regimens to, to, to clean up their, their movement issues. Now, from a coaching standpoint, people are coming to us to get certified, to learn about these global laws. And we've got some changes that are actually being made as we speak to, to how we're going to, to roll that out. But the big idea right, right off the bat is if you're an athlete or a regular Joe, you, you, you'd want to get into the recode part of it. And then if you're a coach, you'd want to start to learn how to see this and, and know what right and wrong is and kind of, you know, discern the information slightly. Um, and that would be getting the coaching certification. Now, the other piece of this, like you said, is that it's Instagram. So Instagram's got a lot of different accounts and there's a lot of different content and there's a bunch of different photos and stuff like that. So we do what we do at, at Goda, you know, as it starts to branch out, the, the, the message can sometimes be blurred a little bit. And we have had that problem. But like you said, what we're teaching is a new a new blueprint. Like what we're saying is guys, the old blueprint, the way that they told us about movement, all those linear concepts, that's wrong. Like that's the bad, that's the bad map. Here's a new map. So now everybody can t- take the new map. Everybody can, can work off of the new map. So it, it's an open concept. It's not just the, the pro athlete. It's, it's the 60 year old lady that's just trying to put off the knee, the knee replacement. So it's, it's, it's all different types of people um, learning that, man, we are connected. Like where everybody is connected back to nature. There is an innate way, right? There is a right way. There's a macro view to this whole thing. So from a, the, the challenging points from a business standpoint are keeping that super simple, disturbingly simple concept of the global laws in front of the train and letting everybody know that, listen, we are saying no to the old blueprint. Now, if people want to fool around with the old blueprint and they want to try to mix it, we want nothing to do with that. Right. The true GOTA is people that are sticking to the global laws. They're doing the global laws and the global laws only in their training. Well, I use this analogy as some people will go to top shelf whiskey. It's as good as it gets. It ain't getting any better. You drink it neat from a beautiful glass that's got your name etched in it. Well, what we got going on is you got people taking this whiskey and they're putting it into one of those little wax cups with the cone at the bottom that you get at the dentist's office. And then they're pouring Pepsi one in it. And it's just the presentation's bad. It's diluted. So that is the challenge. That's the challenge quite literally is, is you have a world of WOTA that's been created from this exercise science, cadaver science concept. And we're stopping that and drawing a line, a firm line saying, no, we're going in this direction. So it does have those, those challenges where we've had to kind of make some adjustments and we've had to kind of put our foot down a little bit and say, no, if it, if it's a violation of the global laws, we want nothing to do with it. If it's a celebration of the global laws, that's what we're, that's what we're all about. And so the, the, as we move forward through this, you know, our business is really keen on keeping the, the, the blueprint simple because our whole message is saving the world's connected tissue. Those violations don't save the world's connective tissue. I'm not interested in letting people waste their time. Um, I'm not interested in, in people wasting their money, right? You know, I come from a, from a family where my dad took me to all my workouts. He, he, he worked very hard to make sure I could get to do the, all those things. And, you know, only to come to find out that I was training like a WODA and I was actually be paying to take away from my athleticism. So now that we've, we know this, People like me, people like Gary Scheffler, we're, we're, we created the GLS performance team to kind of give this back to the world in a really clean and simple way. And that starts with the global laws of GOTA. So I think our, our challenge in the future is, is upholding those global laws and, and letting that run the train. And then we have to let everything kind of to, to sort of work itself or Tetris itself in uh, uh, on the backs of that. And it is an interesting kind of dynamic where, you know, the classic thing is coaches want to coach, like coaches get their fulfillment mm-hmm. from seeing the improvement of their pupil, seeing them start yep. to master it, seeing, you know, that kind of progression. And that's a whole kind of arena of mm-hmm. impact. But then there's like right. the structure itself, which is yes. like, did the certification go through? Did the website stay up? Did those, these other elements and just a very oh, interesting yeah. problem, particularly for a, a, a career like coaching 
in which, you know, it's like, it's like you're losing something. If you guys, it, back when you were at Iowa, if you were preparing for a game, if your head coach had to worry about the logistics of getting the team to the hotel and to the stadium, they're not going to be able that's to do funny. the same quality of job. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and that's why we need a team. Like we, we, we need a hive, you know, we need, we call it the hive of coaches. Right. And so it's people coming together, united, not a social club, united around the concept of, Hey, I believe in these global laws. Like I believe that we were being taught wrong and I believe that there is a right way. And I believe that what I'm seeing on tape, watching nature is the truth. So we need a hive of people that are going to make honey. Right. But if you're now in a process where you're not making honey, um, or like you said, you're, you're now having to do a bunch of other things in the hive that you weren't built to do. You're not the worker bee anymore. Then it can get, it can get challenging. But I think as this thing has grown, you know, it really started. It was, it was, as we started to pick it up, it was me, Gilly, Cody, and Gary. And it was, it was us four talking and trying to build a cert and build a curriculum. And it's built itself since then. And it started to branch out and it's getting bigger. And we are looking for young talent and people that, that understand and that, 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 uh, that are, are fearless and they're, 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 they're not going to bend the knee to man made science. They're not going to bend the knee to anything other than the objective reality. Uh, which is nature. So that is the challenge as we move forward is everybody kind of finding their spots and what they're good at. Um, and then letting them do that, that skill set. Like, you know, I can't, t- I'm not good at shooting video. I'm not good at putting that stuff together, but we got a guy go to BAM and uh, you know, he does a BAM Lionheart is his name. And he does an amazing job of what he does. Like BAM is super invaluable to what we do. Like he's, he's, he, you know, you can't put a price tag on that. Uh, we got a guy, RJ, Archibald and, and he works with me and Gary in, in the GLS performance team. And, and, and he's got a mind, he's a chemist. So he's got a different set of eyes on this thing. And he kind of checks our math. He checks our work. He tidies everything up. So everybody's got these roles and everybody is, is doing something or showcasing their skill a little differently, but it's all centered around. We got this blueprint. We know how to make honey. Now let's go feed the world. Let's go help people. Right on. Well, I'm fired up about it. I, uh, not maybe not to the same extremeness that, that you experienced, but I had uh, hip surgery when I was 21. I've had my fair share of injuries that, you know, in hindsight, candidly start basically came with the onset of me um, kind of hitting the weight room more consistently yeah. with those type of linear movements. So it's something that I've, I've started to implement. I'm going to continue to find ways to do so personally. Um, obviously, everyone listening, make your own decisions as it pertains to your health. If this is resonant, you're going to go and do your own research. But um, I, I, Ricky, I really appreciate you taking some time to talk with me today and coming on the show. Before we ask the standard last two questions, is there anything else you're hoping to share today that I just didn't give you a chance to? I think the, the big piece I would try to challenge people to do is, is to look for themselves. You know, you know empty your cup. Just take a look, objectively look at, at what's in front of you um, and let your, give yourself time to, to, to pour over these concepts, right? Like, and I, I tell people it's, it's happening whether you like it or not. It's like the movie Inception where I plant the idea deep in your brain and then it comes back six months. That's what Instagram is to me. I'm dropping a photo of a tiger and it's got no caption. What the, is this guy talking about? That's going to make sense to you in four months. You just don't know it yet. So let the images work their way into your brain. Pay attention to the pages. Look at it. Look at it from afar. Do whatever you want. But you look at it. You know, it's like like you're doing for your own self. Go look at it. Go go challenge it in your own way, right? Try to prove it wrong uh, because it's nature. It's objective reality. Um, So that's what I always put back on people is just go look for yourself because that's all we ever did. And and, and that's why we are where we are right now with this thing. So we've referenced Instagram. Um, let's make sure that if people want to follow you guys, uh, they have the digital coordinates with which to do so. Where can they find you? So my Instagram handle is at Red Pill Rick. Um, you can look up Ricky Stanzi. You'll find me there. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Um, my my business partner that I'm closest with is 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 Gary Scheffler. He is at GLS underscore training. Me and him and, and, and RJ at Low the Bow are working on the GLS performance team. So you can look up GLS performance team. If you want to see the main guy, the dude that, that first uncovered this, that is Jose Bosch, Coach Gilly, as we call him. And he is at Goda underscore Loco. So I would say start with those accounts on Instagram. If you go into my Instagram bio and you click the link tree, that will take you to really all the other places that you want to go. We've got a, we've got, We've got YouTube pages. We've got YouTube channels. Um, those links are in the bio. We've got a go to shop where if you were looking for equipment, go to shop.com. 
We've got a, a coaching website for people that may be in your area that are teaching the math. So go to coaches.com, go to movement.com is a place where you can buy some courses. You can learn a little bit about the system, kind of what I talked about with the four super tribes. And then there's a subscription training website um, that Gary put together called recode225.com. Once again, all this stuff is easily accessible through the link tree in the bio. If you're at my page, or if you're at Gary's page, if you're at RJ's page. Um, so I would start on Instagram because that's where the majority of the content is, but we're starting to, to branch off into YouTube. And then me and Gary are actually doing some stuff with nofilter.net. And you can find all that once again in that link tree bio. Right on. Before we go to the personal challenge and wrap it up, Ricky, we, we've referenced the store a couple of times. I just want to point out like people are used to, Hey, I'm selling fitness equipment. And it's like, Hey, I've got like my two pound dumbbells that are like my color or something very kind of simplistic. That's not what this is. Just give people like, you know, the briefest overview of what it is that you guys are selling in the, in the shop. Go to shop.com. So at go to shop.com, the biggest pieces you'll see that are kind of speaking to coding a mo the movement back, the, the movement math, the, the global laws are the, the chucks and um, the boards. So the chucks are like a mini board. It's just really, I had one somewhere, um, but it's like a little mini slant board that you kind of, it, it's like a, a, a Jenga block, right? It's just there to kind of give you an idea of where your foot should be. And, and it kind of helps code the foot that I kept talking about in the podcast. Uh, the slant board is a similar idea uh, used for more of the landmine stuff or some of the bigger, heavier movements that you may get into in the gym. So the 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 boards and the and the the chucks are sold on the website. We also have gear on the website. Uh, we've got yoga mats or, or go to mats on the website for the groundwork. So there's all sorts of different stuff that we can use there. The beautiful part of Goda is that you can do it with nothing. All you need is a ground and a wall. The mat makes it easier because we've got a little um, diagram on there for people to follow to kind of help them stay in the math. And then the chucks in the uh, in the uh, the boards kind of act like a training wheel to kind of help funnel you in into that uh, better positioning the 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 go to movement. So that's the main stuff that you'll find on the go to shop. Beautiful. Uh, me and the team are going to do our best to link all of that in the show notes for this episode. You can find it in the app where you're probably listening to this, um, or going deep there com slash podcast for every single episode of the show. But before I let you go, Ricky, I want to give you the mic one final time to issue an actionable personal challenge to the audience. Okay. So I, I got two for you. Nick. I already said one, but that first one is get your feet straight. Get your second toe straight. Get your feet underneath you. Get your inside ankle bone high. Start with those first two to three global laws. Get your feet underneath you. Fist width distance, second toe straight, inside ankle bone high. Get your hips off the counter. That's a movement challenge, a lifestyle challenge I can give you. I'll give you a virtual challenge too. Go scrape video, right? Screen record. Everybody's got that. If you're really into this and you really want to take a look for yourself, go on YouTube, type in ACL tear, non-contact ACL tear, non-contact Achilles tear. Go watch those tears. I always challenge people to watch 100. Go watch 100 non-contact shreds frame by frame in slow motion. That will start your journey. That's the challenge that Gilly gave me. And that's the challenge that I will give to everybody else. So start to walk with straight feet, get your hips off the counter and then go watch the shreds. Right on. Well, um, I, I'm not good with injuries. I usually walk, walk, look away when it's like going on during one of the games, but I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to take, I don't know about a hundred. I'm going to take the challenge for sure. I hope everyone else take out a, there will as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Ricky, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me Aaron. I really appreciate it. We just went deep with Ricky Stanzi. Hope everyone out there has a fantastic day. Hey, thank you so much for listening to the end of my conversation with Ricky. If you want to think more about changing the future of human health, you need to check out our past interview with Dr. Timothy Wong. He has a medical practice. He's an MD. He only charges $35, no insurance, and will see and treat anybody. It's mind expanding. Go check it out.